Hello everyone and uh, welcome to a tutorial on unit vectors. So today we're going to be doing a problem regarding unit vectors in which with well, the question, or let's go ahead and read the question. So it says three displacement vectors of a ball shown in that figure have the following magnitudes. Notice that we have the absolute signs around the magnitude, uh, around the vectors over here, which denotes that we're only talking about the units of the magnet uh, we're only talking about the magnitude of the vectors over here so vector b has a magnitude of 40 units vector c has a magnitude of 30 units and what they want us to find in this question is the resultant in unit vector notation now what is unit vector notation when they talk about unit vector notation they usually or they always mean that they want the vector written in this format so you can write v is equal to some constant which we're going to call a and then we're going to give it a direction so a unit direction which is the i or a unit vector so i hat is a unit vector plus a constant b and the j component of the vector or in the direction in the j uh, end of things. So in order for us to solve this problem now, do you want us to find the resultant? So in order to find the resultant, we have to be able to add up these three vectors together. So we have vector A, we have vector B, and then we have vector C. Now they haven't given us the directions of those vectors, they've just given us the magnitudes. Uh, it's up. It's it's left for us to find out what the directions of them are. So ideally, what we want to end up with is we want to end up with our resultant vector, which is going to be the summation of vector a plus vector b <coughs> plus vector c. And before we can find the resultant, we have to actually figure out each one of those. Vector. So let's start with vector A. Now, what is vector A equivalent to? Now, let me just draw for you uh, the Cartesian plane for the i and j axes. So so if we look over here, this axis right here would be the positive i and this direction over here would be the positive j and this over here would be negative i and that would be negative j so if our vector is going in that direction it's going in the positive i direction if our vector is going along this line it's going into the positive j and if it's going uh, let's say somewhere between the two then it's a combination of both the i and j directions so over here we were gonna start off with vector a so in order for us to find where where vector a is going we we have to ask ourselves which direction is it going is it going along the i direction or is it going along the j direction well the answer is it's fully going in the j direction because uh, let me draw a little arrow for you here if you look at vector a i'm gonna draw it on this side it's going in that direction with the with the arrowhead pointing upwards okay so that means that w in order for us to write vector a we're gonna write the magnitude of the vector which is 20 units so we're gonna write 20 j and then we're gonna include our units at the end so vector a is made up of 20 j units simple as that alrighty let's move on to the next one vector b now vector b is a little bit tricky because it's neither going all in the j direction nor is it going all in the i direction it, it has a combination of of both so it's going upward and towards the right at the same time and in order for us to determine the direction of that vector we have to use a little bit of trigonometry which is why they've given us this angle right here uh, there's a reason why they give us that 45 degree angle 
and it is to help us use the trigonometry so we can figure out exactly in which direction is this vector pointing. Now I'm gonna draw this on a little separate graph. So if we were to draw the components of vector b over here, down a little bit and I'm gonna draw a vector B in green do that. so here is our vector B over here and we're gonna label that vector B and the angle between it and the horizontal is given by 45 degrees. Now we're going to have to, here's where the uh, trigonometry comes in. Uh, usually one of those sides is the cosine side and which one uh, on the other side is the sine side. So how do we know which is which? Well, a, a little trick that can help us figure that out is that the side that is immediately adjacent to the angle is the cosine side and adjacent is just a little fancy word for next to so you gotta ask yourself which one of these two sides either that side or that side is immediately next to um, the angle and the answer is this side right here so that's gonna be the cosine side always uh, now some students like to say that you know always the horizontal side is the cosine side and the vertical is always the sine and that's not really the case because it all depends on where the angle is if this angle was to switch place over here that would change things a little bit so I would go with the adjacent side to the angle uh, method rather than always assuming that in the horizontal direction is going to be cosine and always in the vertical direction is going to be sine because it's not always like that. Sometimes the vertical could be the cosine and the horizontal could be the sine and we'll discuss that in future examples. So this side over here is going to be given by uh, the magnitude of vector b which is 40. So we're going to write 40 cosine 45 degrees let me just label this as i and label that as j so we just came up with the magnitude uh, or sorry rather the direction the magnitude and the direction of vector b so this over here what is between the brackets the 40 cosine 45 is the vertical component or sorry rather the horizontal component of vector b because every vector has can be made up of components and vector b is no different it's made up of a horizontal component and it's made up of a vector component uh, a vertical component so the vertical components of uh, vector b now so if this is the cosine side that that automatically makes this side the sine side so the sine side is going to be made up of 40 sine 45 degrees alrighty so that is now the vertical component of vector b so when we want to write vector b over here we're gonna write it in terms of its components so the first component is 40 cosine 45 I plus notice that both of them are positive because it's going to the right and upward both are positive directions and the vertical component is going to be 40 sine 45 degrees and that is going to be going into the J direction so we just figured out vector B so let's figure out the components of the last factor which is vector C now vector C is a bit more tricky because it's pointing downwards and the angles are a little uh, flipped up so if we go ahead and draw those so the components that are gonna make vector C are gonna be a little bit different because one of the component is going to be pointing downwards 
and another is going to be pointing to the right. And I'm going to draw vector C in green here, and it's going to be pointing approximately in that direction. And obviously the angle between the vector and the horizontal is going to be 45 degrees. So let me just label that vector C and label this positive I and that we will label negative J. All right, very good. So as we have done for vector B, we're going to do exactly the same for, for vector C. It's no different. So once again, we're faced with the question, which side is the cosine side and which side is the sine side? Well, let's look where the angle is. The angle is right here. Now, the second question I have to ask myself is, what is the side that is immediately next to that angle? And the answer is that side, because you can see it's touching. So that makes this side over here the cosine side. So all I have to do is write the magnitude of vector C, which is given over here as 30 units. So we're going to write 30 cosine 45 degrees. And now if this is the cosine, that means that's the sine. So likewise, we're going to write the vertical component as 30 sine 45 degrees. And now we can go ahead and write the components of our vector C. So our vector C, two components are 30 cosine 45 I minus because it's going downwards right uh, 30 sine 45 J okay so now we've just come up with our three vectors over here vector a vector B and vector C. Now we can go ahead and add them up to get the resultant vector. So just to remind you, the equation for the resultant vector is made up of vector A plus vector B plus vector C. Now all we're going to have to do now is substitute into that equation. So vector A is just 20J and I should include units in both just to be consistent. Not units, units, okay. Um, 